Hey guys, this is Thomas from Stylized Station and welcome to my stylized material series. And in this episode, I'm going to be showing you guys how to make some beautiful and very, very easy stylized cloth. Now, if you want this material for yourself, I'm going to make sure that this material is available for everyone that's a part of my Patreon community. So I will leave a link in the description and the asset itself will be free to download in my 3D artist coloring book, a way to practice your texturing with professional assets. And I will also leave a link in the description below. So enough of that, let's go ahead and learn how to make some stylized cloth. So let's talk about our base layer. You can pick anything you want, but just make sure that's a fill layer. And I'm gonna go with a nice strong teal today, something like that. And with stylized art, you wanna make sure that there's almost little to no reflectivity, um, especially in cloth. The more reflective something is, the more realistic it looks. So let's go and remove all these channels except the roughness and let's pop the roughness all the way to one right off the bat. The next layer is a very important layer, which is your gradient layer. So in stylized art, you want to use gradients to psychologically trick the viewer's eye to naturally pointing them into a spot that you want them to look. So if you wanted them to look down um, into her body down here, you could start with darker on top and lightly change the color to the bottom. So your eye naturally is drawn to the bottom. In this case, just for the sake of being an example, let's go up. So again, we're gonna create a new fill layer and we're gonna remove everything because we're trying to pass all of these values through. The only thing we're changing is the color. To get the color the right value, we're gonna make it the same color and then just lighten it quite a bit and maybe add some green for a bit of color variation. Now, when this is done, you can add a black mask. And then one more time, you can add a generator. Now you have two options. You can either add a position generator right off the bat, which will provide you with a little less customizability um, or you can add a mask editor, which I'm going to do and do it manually yourself. So mask editor, and we can drop the curvature down to nothing. And then we're going to be using the position gradient just like that. And already you can see it's got a nice looking gradient from the top to bottom. I don't think that's light enough. So let's desaturate it a little bit. And you can see in an extreme case, this is what it looks like. So let's desaturate it, add a little more, and that's nice. Just like that. You can also mess with, in the generator, plenty of the, you can mess with the balance and the color levels, but I think in terms of this, this is looking pretty good, nice and stylized already. So already off the bat, we've got a pretty good stylized material, but you can take this even further. So what we're gonna do is once again, add another fill layer and we're going to try and add some nice highlights to the edges of the folded cloth. Now, since we have generated maps for this, more specifically a curvature map, we can do this really easily. So once again, we're going to choose our base color and remove all of these values. And let's select our base color and make it slightly lighter or actually quite a bit lighter than our base here. So once that's done, we can add a black mask and a generator. And the generator again is gonna be a mask editor and we're only gonna be using the curvature. So let's go into the curvature opacity and you can see here, it's starting to highlight everything. So let's get the color right. If we go a little more white, that probably looks good. You don't want too white like this and you don't want too dark. You wanna get it just so it's saturated enough like this so the edges start to really pop out just like that just like that now the next step is that these these corners look a little too sharp and they don't really blend very well so what we can do to edit this is we can add a filter and we can put a blur right on top of it and just like that it's smoothed out the edges really really nicely and the cool thing about this and using Substance Painter is that even if you don't like the color that's set up, we can always hop back in and change it to whatever we want and we can get a nice different color 
just by messing around with the values, just like that. So now that we've got the basic color down in some of the curvature highlights, it's time to start adding in a bit of shadow and grunge detail. And we're going to be doing this in two layers. The first one is going to be our ambient occlusion layer, which is very easy to do. So let's create a new layer and remove all the color values again, or sorry, remove all the channels except color. And let's pop this all the way down to black just to start. We're going to right click to add a black mask, and then we're going to add a generator. And we're going to just use the ambient occlusion generator. Now, right off the bat, you can see it's only selecting the highlighted values. So we can simply invert it and you can see the difference right here. Very subtle, um, but it's a subtle difference that really, really adds to your product or your asset when you put in multiple layers. So great, ambient occlusion is done. We've got our curvatures, our gradient, and our base color is all set nicely, but it's still missing a few more things. And that next thing is to add some dirt variation or even grunge into the edges and folds. Uh, it's looking like, it's looking a little flat right now. So let's add a fill layer and we can change the color all the way to black, remove everything, right click, add black mask, right click, add generator. And then this time in the generator, we're going to add the dirt setting. So right off the bat, it's a little too extreme, but the good thing about PBR is that we can easily customize this. So I can drop down the dirt level to something just so where it starts to kick in. So maybe right here. So what it's doing is it's basically filling in all the little cracks in this material with just dirt that would get in the edges there. So you can see it kind of fills in the natural shape of the cloth. So it works really well. Substance Painter works really well in conjunction with Substance Designer. But you can re create really cool materials like this and just fill in the cracks with grunge just as a secondary detail. And then if you want, you can either up the grunge amount, lower the level, up the grunge amount if you really want, just to add some more detailing. And you can just see when I remove it, the subtle differences in the cloth almost like we can add more. Yeah, let's just make it nice and dirty. Just like that. And then that's the difference right there. Let's drop it slightly. Not bad at all. So we're almost done. The next thing we really need is color variation. And there's two little tricks that I like to do where we can kind of take care of that. So right now it's flat and the light is just hitting it straight on and it looks super boring. There's no real dynamic lighting to it. So what we can do is let's add a new filter or a new fill layer, remove everything once again. Let's leave this black for now and we can change this to soft light. And then when we can right click and add a generator, and then the generator is just going to be a simple light generator. Now you also have to remove everything from there and it's added nice dynamic lighting coming off of the top and you can see what a huge difference it makes. So here it is with basic plain 360 degree lighting, uh, pretty boring, but suddenly when you add the light generator, super dynamic, very dramatic lighting and it's baked into the material itself. So there's one small detail we still need to add, and that is to add some more dramatic lighting and refinement to the actual piece itself. So let's add a new fill layer, remove everything. We'll leave the color as is, and then we can just simply right click and go right to a filter. The filter is gonna be the baked lighting filter. We can remove all of this, even though it doesn't matter, but it's good practice. And then we can change the blend mode to soft light. And let's see the difference. So these are with the two lighting filters. So first lighting and second lighting. Now this is a little extreme and almost makes it look glossy. So the good thing is that you could drop this all the way down. I typically pop this around 30% just to help really accentuate the values. And the cool thing about it is that it's super, super customizable. So you can change all the color values. So even though this is a pretty colored piece already, you can probably add some dark, dark green values to the base just so it starts bouncing off the bottom. It's not that noticeable, honestly, but it's just an option you have here if you ever need it. 
So that's it, guys. Very simple. It's only a few layers. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven layers. That's it. Uh, once you get used to it, you can pop this out in under five minutes as well. I hope you enjoyed it. So if you want to get a hold of this asset yourself, it's available in my 3D coloring book. I'll leave a link in the description. And if you want access to the actual material itself, what I just made, that's gonna be available on my Patreon, just like every other material I make.